Hi, I'm Carmen from The Featherweight Shop. Today I want to show you how to adjust this style foot controller here that goes with this white featherweight. Uh, most of your later white featherweights had this style. It's often referred to as a clamshell style foot controller. Uh, the early ones, the early white featherweights, had uh, just this button foot controller just like most of your black uh, featherweights had. Uh, and we already have a video on, on this particular one and how to adjust it. Uh, it's in the schoolhouse section of the website if you haven't watched that one. But particularly this machine today is, uh, well, I'll just show you here. This controller is out of adjustment and therefore it has no slow speed with it. When you press down on the controller, it goes immediately to top speed. So we're going to show you how to adjust this one. This controller that we're going to be adjusting today is a pretty common style that has this rubbery mat on the bottom. And what we often see is people peel this back in order to get to the, to the screw to open it up. And uh, when you peel this back, you can never get it to stay down again. So I'm going to show you uh, the preferred method. And that is, there, there's, a little, uh, there's a little hole indentation. And if you press down with your finger, you can see that there's an indentation right there. And if you'll take a little razor blade, you can just make a cut in it like that. You can't even see that cut now. But now we're able to insert our screwdriver through there to take that one screw out that is holding this together. Now I will say that when we work on uh, a controller, <laughs> we're going to uh, make sure that we have it unplugged. So we are unplugging this machine. I'm going to test it here. Yep, we're good. We're not hooked up to electricity. So we've used a razor blade and made a little slit here. And now we're just going to insert our screwdriver. You kind of got to feel around to, to find that screw in there. And then we're going to unscrew this screw. It won't fall all the way out, but you'll feel it kind of click once it's, once it's out all the way. So first I'm going to show you how this controller works and that'll tell us why it's out of adjustment. Uh, there's a little kind of button right here and when this controller is closed, that button presses down on this copper tab. And this copper tab, it draws the end in where, this, where all the carbon discs are. Because this has carbon, uh, carbon discs in it just like uh, the other uh, common featherweight one, uh, the, uh, the Bakelite foot controller. So when you push down on this, it makes connection here at the end and that's what starts drawing the current through this, this tube. Uh, and then when it gets all the way down at the bottom, it reaches the shorting point. You can see that little copper piece right there. And when it hits that, it is no longer using this and it's sending 100% of the power onto your machine. This one, however, is out of adjustment, and when we press down on there, it doesn't start to do anything until it gets all the way towards the bottom and hits that shorting tab right there. And so that's why there is no slow speed. So there's just one screw to adjust on this controller, and it's this little, little one that you can see right there. And uh, it has loosened up, and so we need to screw it back in till it's about in the, in the middle. So you can see here we've adjusted this screw and so about half of it is showing on this side of the bracket and the other half on the other side of the bracket. And that should be about right for adjustment. So let's test it out now. Okay, now we're gonna plug the machine back in and we're gonna see if our adjustment has worked. And it has. I can now sew slowly with a full range of speed all the way to top speed. So that's how you would adjust that controller. Uh, but I want to show you one more thing. We're going to unplug this one. There's another controller uh, that came on some of the 220 uh, volt uh, featherweights. And then also on many of your other uh, older, 
older singers as well, and these were often brown, like this one's kind of a dark brown. Now instead of this uh, foamy stuff on the bottom, this has a little plug, and when you pop that plug out, you can now see the screw down inside there. And this one's a little bit different. It actually has uh, two screws. It has this one that was down underneath that plug, and we're going to take it out. Without that foam, it'll come all the way out. And then there's another one up here on this part of the controller. And we'll get that one out as well. It takes both of them out for it to open all the way. This controller does not have that adjustment screw, however, uh, although there is one little adjustment in there. Now, this one is not plugged in or hooked up to a machine, but I'm going to show you how you would adjust that. With this one, you would just loosen this screw right here. This one, although it does not have the adjustment screw, this copper tab itself is adjustable. So you can move it, uh, you can see here, either direction. So we would want to, if this one was out of adjustment and had become loose, we would slide it over and tighten that screw back down. And then that would give us our full range of, uh, of power on this one as well. So that's how you adjust the clamshell style foot controller. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that most all your vintage sewing machines do not have a power, a power switch. Uh, so whenever it's plugged in, it's got power to the machine. So we recommend that you unplug the machine when it's not in use or put it on a power strip or a surge protector so that you can easily turn it off and on. Uh, it's a lot safer that way. If you have any questions, send us an email or give us a call here at the Featherweight Shop or post a question on Facebook. We're always glad to help. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified whenever we come out with more videos. Have a great day.